by Lucy Sprague Mitchell, Irma Simpton Black, and Jess Stanton. Illustrated by Tibor Gergerly. Once there was a taxi. It was a bright yellow with two red lines running around its body. Inside it had a soft leather seat and two hard little let-down seats. It was a smart little taxi, for it could start fast. Jerk whiz! It could tear along the street. Whiz squeak! It could stop fast. Squeak jerk! But its driver's name was Bill. Together they were a speedy pair. One day the taxi was standing on the street close to the sidewalk. Bill and the little taxi didn't like to stand still long. I wonder who will be our next passengers, thought Bill. Just then, Bill heard feet running on the sidewalk, thump, 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 and he heard some smaller feet pattering along too, thumpity, thumpity, thumpity. He leaned out and saw Tom with a little suitcase and Tom's mother with a big suitcase, and both of them were breathing hard. Oh, gasped Tom's mother. Taxi driver man, please drive us to the station as fast as you can. We're very late and the train won't wait. Oh, oh, oh. Tom and his mother tumbled into the taxi and slammed the door. Sure, lady, answered Bill. We're a speedy pair. We can get you there. And away went the taxi. It liked to tear along in a hurrying, purring softly. It rushed down the street like a yellow streak, with the two lead rinds blurred into one around its middle. It wiggled through the traffic. Tom and his mother bounced and bounced on the leather seats. Tom's mother sat on the wide, soft one behind, but Tom sat on a little hard one so that he could look out of the window. Then suddenly, squeak jerk, the taxi stopped short. It stood stock still in the middle of the street. Ahead shone a bright red light. Underneath the light stood a big traffic policeman holding up his right hand. Tom's mother called through the window. Taxi driver man, must you stop when the lights are red? We simply have to get ahead. We're terribly late and the train won't wait. And Bill answered, Surely later you have seen how cars must wait until the lights are green. But we're a speedy pair. We'll surely get you there. Then suddenly, jerk quiz, they were off again and down the crowded street. For the light had changed to green again. Away went the taxi down the street faster than ever. Now it had to turn and twist. For the street was full of traffic, trucks and wagons and other taxis. The little taxi hurried past them all like a yellow streak, and the people could hardly see Tom's little face looking out of the window as he bounced and bounced by. My, the people said on the sidewalk, that's a speedy taxi. I wonder why it's in such a hurry. Lucky it's got such a good driver. The taxi wiggled around a big bus. It jiggled across a trolley track, and suddenly, squeak jerk, the little taxi stopped short again. It stood stock still behind a big coal truck that was backing up to the sidewalk, for the driver was trying hard to get his truck just the right way for the black coal to go jumping and clattering down a slide into the hole in the sidewalk. Tom stood up so that he could see the big coal truck better. He could see the handle on the side. He wished he could watch the driver turn that handle and make the big truck tip up in front. He almost wished they weren't in a hurry. Tom's mother called through the open window. Taxi driver man, first it's the cop that makes us stop and now you're stuck behind a truck. We're awfully late and the train won't wait. So Bill called to the truck driver. Please, will you try to let me get by? And the truck driver grinned and stopped his truck. Carefully and slowly, Bill squeezed by the big coal truck close to the sidewalk. Bill called over his shoulder. We're a speedy pair. We'll get you there. Now the taxi went so fast that people skipped up on the sidewalk as they went by, and everyone thought, that's the speediest taxi I ever saw. Then suddenly, squeak jerk, the taxi stopped short, and Tom almost fell through the front window. Tom's mother bounced so hard on the wide leather seat that her head whacked the ceiling of the taxi. Her hat slid down over one ear. Her big suitcase fell over with a bang on the floor, and Tom's little suitcase hopped off the seat. Tom's mother pulled her hat on straight again. Then she looked at her watch. Then she looked out of the window at all the taxis and buses and trucks. Once more she called to Bill on the front seat. Taxi driver man, first it's a cop that makes you stop. Then you get stuck behind a truck. Now the traffic is in our way. We are likely to sit here the rest of the day. We're horribly late and the train won't wait. So Bill began to blow his horn. Honk, honk, shrieked the little taxi. Honk, honk, honk. We want to go. You make us slow. We're a speedy pair. We want to get there. Honk, 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 honk. The nearer they came to the station, the more the taxis and buses and trucks were on the street. Suddenly they stopped. Bill blew the horn again. Honk, honk, honk. Down the street, up above the station, they could see the big station clock. In five minutes, the train would go. They were very terribly, awfully horribly late, and they knew the train wouldn't wait. Then suddenly, jerk, jerk, the traffic began to move. 
First a taxi, then a bus, then a truck, then more taxis, more buses, more trucks, till the whole line was moving. The speedy little taxi wiggled through the traffic. It dodged around a bus, and it twisted around a truck, and it whizzed past a taxi. Tom's mother kept looking at the big station clock. It said four minutes before the train went, then three minutes, then two minutes, and the little taxi drew up by the station. Tom jumped out of the taxi while his mother gave Bill the money. She grabbed her big suitcase. Tom grabbed his little suitcase. And off they ran. Thump, 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 thumpity, thumpity, thumpity. Bill looked after them and grinned at his yellow taxi. Sure, he said, we're a speedy pair. We got them there. And it was true. The conductor was just ready to signal the engineer to start. But he saw Tom and his mother come running down the platform, and he waited for them. He took the big suitcase from Tom's mother, held the door open for her, and handed her the big suitcase. Tom stepped up on a train after her, panning hard from his run and holding his little suitcase. All aboard, cried the conductor, waving his hand to the engineer. Then the conductor swung onto the train just as it began to move. You're a fast runner, he said to Tom, and to Tom's mother he said, Lady, you just made it. Tom was still breathing hard, but he managed to gasp out. We made it because we had such a speedy taxi and the speedy driver. You should have seen that taxi hurry. The End